Ralph Waldo Emerson was born in Boston on May 25, 1803. His father was William Emerson, a well-known Unitarian minister. He gradually moved from the doctrines he believed into formulas, and published his transcendental philosophy in his sketch on nature. Emerson's father died two weeks before he was eight years old, and the following year he was sent to Boston Latin School. In October 1817, when Emerson was 14 years old, he enrolled at Harvard University and was appointed freshman representative, a status that gave him free accommodation. In order to supplement his meager salary, he would go to Uncle Ripley's school in Waltham, Massachusetts, to tutor and teach during the winter vacation. After Emerson graduated from Harvard in 1821, he assisted his brother in setting up a school for young women in his mother's home. This was after he established his own school in Chelmsford, while Emerson's brother went to Gottingen to study theology, Emerson ran the school. Emerson spent the next few years as a president, then entered Harvard Divinity School, where he emerged as a Unitarian minister in 1829. In 1832, a dispute with church stewards over the administration of Holy Communion services and misgivings about public prayers led to his resignation. Ralph Emerson was a distant relative of Charles Emerson. Charles was also a sectarian minister and founded Emerson College in his surname. Their ancestor, Thomas Emerson, immigrated to Ipwich, Massachusetts in 1640 and was the pioneer of this pastoral family. In September 1835, Emerson and other like-minded intellectuals founded the Transcendental Club. It was not until July 1840 that Emerson published under a pseudonym his first short essay on the essay written in September 1836. Nature When the work became a fundamental tenet of transcendentalism, many people immediately assumed that it was an Italian work. In 1838, he was invited back to Harvard Divinity School to deliver the commencement address. His comments immediately shocked the entire Protestant community because he demonstrated that while Jesus was a man, he was not God a statement that people at the time would rather not have heard. As a result, he was accused of being an atheist and poisoning the minds of young people, and he offered no response or defense in the face of these criticisms. He was not invited to lecture at Harvard again for the next 40 years, but by the mid-1880s his position became canonical for Unitarian doctrine. In early 1842, Emerson's eldest son, Waldo, died of scarlet fever. Emerson presented his own grief in two of his masterpieces, an elegy and his sketch experience. In the same year William James was born, Emerson agreed to be his godfather. Ralph Emerson was friends with Nathaniel Hawthorne and Henry David Thoreau and often walked with them in Concord. Emerson inspired Thoreau's genius. Thoreau also built a house in Walden, Concord, where Emerson lived. While Thoreau lived at Walden, Emerson provided food and hired Thoreau to do some work. When Thoreau left Walden two years later, Emerson also left to travel and give lectures, and Thoreau stayed at Emerson's home. Their friendly relationship broke down after Emerson gave Thoreau poor advice when he published his first book, A Week on the Concord and Merrimack Rivers. The book did not have an extensive design, and Emerson took him to see his agent, leaving Thoreau to bear the cost and risk of publishing the book. The book was not widely read, and Thoreau began to run into debt. Eventually, the two men reconciled some of their differences, but Thoreau privately chastised Emerson for drifting away from his original outlook on life, and Emerson came to view Thoreau as a misanthrope. Emerson gave a negative review of Thoreau's 19th century eulogy. Although Emerson was an abstract and profound writer, his speeches were still heard by many people. After Emerson died on April 27, 1882, he was buried in Slippy Valley Cemetery in Concord County, Massachusetts. 
In May 2006, 168 years after Emerson delivered the Divinity School Address, Harvard University Divinity School announced the founding of the UUA Unitarian Universalist Association. Emerson is a representative figure of American cultural spirit. U.S. President Lincoln called him American Confucius and the father of American civilization. Transcendentalism represented by Emerson's thought was an important ideological emancipation movement in the history of American thought, known as the American Renaissance. Transcendentalism emphasizes the direct communication between man and God and the divinity in human nature, and has a strong critical spirit. The following are the famous quotes of this American thinker and writer. What lies behind you and what lies in front of you, pales in comparison to hate lies inside of you. Never lose an opportunity of seeing anything beautiful, for beauty is God's handwriting. Enthusiasm is the mother of effort, and without it nothing great was ever achieved. Adopt the pace of nature, her secret is patience. To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. It is one of the blessings of old friends that you can afford to be stupid with them. LT is not length of life, but depth of life. Nature always wears the colors of the spirit. People do not seem to realize that their opinion of the world is also a confession of character. The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time you fall. A friend may well be reckoned the masterpiece of nature. A hero is no braver than an ordinary man, but he is brave five minutes longer. Our chief want is someone who will inspire us to be what we know we could be. Hitch your wagon to a star, who you are speaks so loudly I can't hear what you're saying. With the past, I have nothing to do, nor with the future. I live now. An ounce of action is worth a ton of theory. Nobody can bring you peace but yourself. Bad times have a scientific value. These are occasions a good learner would not miss make the most of yourself, for that is all there is of you. This time, like all times, is a very good one, if we but know what to do with. Do the thing we fear, and death of fear is certain. Every wall is a door. Character is higher than intellect. A great soul will be strong to live as well as think. Every particular in nature, a leaf, a drop, a crystal, a moment of time I related to the whole, and partakes of the perfection of the whole. No change of circumstances can repair a defect of character. Win as if you were used to it, lose as if you enjoyed it for a change. Men are what their mothers made them. To be great is to be misunderstood. Life is a succession of lessons which must be lived to be understood. Alice Riddle, and the key to a riddle is another riddle. Love of beauty is taste. The creation of beauty is art. The sky is the daily bread of the eyes. Our greatest glory is not in never failing, but in rising up every time we fail. The creation of a thousand forests is in one acorn. Shallow men believe in luck. Strong men believe in cause and effect. He who is not every day conquering some fear has not learned the secret of life. For everything you have missed, you have gained something else, and for everything you gain, you lose something else. The reward of a thing well done is having done it. Common sense is genius dressed in its working clothes. In skating over thin ice our safety is in our speed. We aim above the mark to hit the mark. Ralph Emerson's life story and his ideas emphasize the independence and inner strength of the individual. He encourages people to follow their own path, pursue their true selves, and promote sincere and open communication with others. Emerson's thoughts have inspired countless people, allowing them to think about the true meaning of life and bravely pursue their ideals. In the process of following our inner voice, we may encounter difficulties and challenges, but as Emerson said, 
life is a journey, not a destination. By daring to experiment and transcend tradition, we can discover our true possibilities and, in the process, shape a unique and meaningful life.